Okay, so normally I, you know, I'd have Bjorn do his drop bags, but he's my cameraman. So, um, so I'm gonna show you how we do it. Um, Junior Iditarod is the same way. Um, you get two bags, Junior Iditarod, they can be up to 40 pounds a piece. Um, they have to be, or they have to, they can be up, be up to 50 pounds a piece, but they have to be at least 40 pounds, can't be more than 80, something like that. Um, uh, so, but we don't get specialized bags. So what I'm doing is I'm repurposing the bag that, uh, that my drop bags came in and I turn it inside out and then one of the return bags because I don't need a return bag at every checkpoint. Okay, so at any rate, um, what we do here is we, first we start by marking it in big bold letters so everybody can read it. Because we don't want anyone to get confused as to whose this is. Whose is this? Bjorn Keller. And what's it for? Junior. I did a rod. 150 miles from Kinnick Lake to Yetna and then on to Willow. Okay, now we, we are going to send out two bags for B. Same thing. It's going to be a bag of frozen and a bag of non-frozen. So uh, now we're going to go downstairs and we're going to bag up his dog food. We're going to do five pounds of kibble, three pounds of race mix, two pounds of nuggets, Five pounds of ground beef. So it's eight dog team, 10 pounds of food. They get a really nice go of it. They're gonna love it. And then uh, we're gonna send you with, uh, we're gonna send out 40 pounds of, of chicken and chicken skins as well. And, and that's just what we're sending out. He's gonna leave here with probably, I don't know, three pounds a dog of dog of fresh unfrozen meat in the sled that he'll snap along the way. Um, but basically, the dogs for this 150 mile run are going to get almost 10 pounds of meat. And you got your crackers, you got your juices, you got four lithium batteries, we've got two out of three instant coffees, there's the third one, and we got the hand warmers. Uh, so, uh, right before we put it in the drop bag, anything, we're going to we're gonna bag it and then double bag it. So it's going to go in a Ziploc. Um, like this is Ziploc, this will get bagged again. All this is going to get Ziploc, it'll get bagged again with, with a, another plastic bag. And the reason is, is that invariably, somewhere along the way, this race, that race, whatever, um, the frozen bags thaw if it's too warm or someone sets them up against the heat duct or whatever the case is, someone unknowingly brings them inside. And you have meat goo, meat juices leak out. And if they leak out onto this bag, we don't want them getting to the stuff he's gonna put in his mouth. So it's very important to protect it against all manner of refrigeration failure. So uh, just cause it's the winter time in Alaska doesn't mean it's gonna be frozen. So anyway, we'll get to that at the end. It's really important that we keep everything laid out, that we don't do the final packing until we're ready to deliver the bag. And the reason is, is we wanna be able to look and see exactly what we've put in our bags without having to root through anything. That's how we don't make mistakes. Um, so we're gonna leave this here until tomorrow when we do the final pack and keep thinking about what we may have missed.